What's up guys, International back again with a new video. Today we're going to be running you through exactly how to make your first collab sale as a loop maker. Let's get into it. Before we get into the methods, make sure to join our free Discord down below. You're going to find like-minded producers hustling, making money, working on their music and collabing with each other. Enjoy the video. Step number one, finding your niche. For us, we've chosen a niche for Travis Scott and Don Toliver doing trap guitar style loops. Others will do Drill for Central C, Jersey Club, his Future, Lil Baby, Russ Millions, etc. So it doesn't matter what your niche is, as long as you can make it every day and keep pumping it out. You want to build a brand and a name for yourself in this particular niche so that your audience and producers come back to you for more loops in the future. Try to maintain loops within a particular niche for at least two to three months. Otherwise, you're not going to get feedback and you don't know whether you're doing it correctly. Once you've chosen your niche, you need to research your audience. It is super important that you make loops for your audience rather than for yourself. Next, you're going to choose with your niche's sound. When you're making loops, you're not necessarily making them for the artists of that niche, but for the producers who make the beats. They're the ones that sell the beats, they're the ones you'll get the money from. So, super important takeaway from this first step is to make loops that the number one top beat makers in your niche will use. If you're not doing this, you're not making any money. Step two is becoming a master of your sound. If your loops suck, nobody's gonna use them. So once you've chosen your audience, now you need to master making fire loops for those beat makers. You don't want to start burning bridges early on in your career by sending out shit loops. This will take weeks or even months to start making loops that are good enough to send out. So you're going to want to be investing your time into watching tutorials and getting better at your craft. If you want to learn from us, we have tutorials on our channel showing you how to get better at making loops. But on YouTube, you can find producers that are teaching you how to make loops in your particular niche. It's also important to invest money into the skill of making your loops by buying via VSTs and plugins that are going to help you make better loops. We've spent hundreds of dollars on VSTs and effect plugins that help us elevate our sound. With whatever program you're using, make sure you take advantage and make the most of all of the stock plugins they have in your program. We have a full tutorial on our channel where we make a whole Travis Scott loop only using stock plugins in FL Studio. You can find this video up the top. So to wrap up step two, you always want to be learning and perfecting your craft. Your loops are only going to get better. Now that you've got step one and two covered, you can get on to step three, which is putting out sample packs. It's time to get those downloads. When we release packs, we release 10 loops, but you can put anything from 10 all the way up to 50, 60, however many you want to do. We recommend at least doing 10, otherwise there's not enough value in the pack, even though it is free. Sample packs are completely free to upload. For the thumbnail, use a free online editor. Make the thumbnail eye-catching and keep your theme consistent throughout all your sample packs. You want producers to see your thumbnail and know the loops are high quality and know that it's coming from you every single time. Now that it's up on YouTube, take your best loops, do a post on Instagram so it goes out to more people. In the three months that we've been doing sample packs, we've gained over a thousand downloads from organic YouTube traffic. If you're discouraged and getting low views on your first couple sample packs, keep them coming, keep them consistent. If they're high quality loops, producers will eventually catch on to them. Don't neglect your titles and your tags. Check out what other producers are doing in the same niche and just copy them. In the future, we'll do a tutorial on how to promote your kits on YouTube and Instagram. For your first 10 kits, get them up on YouTube and let the algorithm do its thing. So to wrap it up, at least 10 loops in a pack, eye-catching thumbnails that people will click on, posting on both YouTube and Instagram, getting as much organic traffic as you can. You're not going to make money if you're not consistent. The next step is being consistent with your uploads. You hear it all the time, but you're going to need to stay consistent. You're not going to make money if you're not posting consistently. If you're focusing just on loop making, we think you should get a pack out at least once a week. For us, we try to upload a new pack at least every five days. Some producers will upload a kit every month, but it depends how many loops you have in your pack. What's worked for us is doing smaller packs and posting them more consistently. Quality over quantity. We see producers posting huge packs with 50 60 plus loops, but there might only be five loops in that whole kit that people will actually use. Aim to make high quality loops in smaller packs and post them more consistently. So staying consistent is key as it pays off in the long run. If you stay consistent over a long enough period of time, you're almost guaranteed to achieve your goals and beat 99% of your competition. Step five, if you made it this far in the video, you've had to learn the secret techniques about actually getting collab sales that no other YouTubers talk about. These are the outreach methods that help us go from zero to our first 50 collab sales in just the first few months of using them. Make sure before you start sending out your loops, you make sure that you're sending them to producers who actually make sales. If you're not doing this, you won't make any money. As a rule of thumb, we like to make sure that we're sending to producers with at least a thousand subscribers on YouTube and pulling good consistent views. Outreach method number one, finding producers on YouTube. If you do a little bit 
baby Luke. So you're gonna be wanting to search up Lil Baby Type Beat on YouTube. We're gonna click on a video with a good amount of views so you know the producers are making sales. In the description, you will usually find their email and their Instagram handle. Usually people will send loops straight to that producer's email with no guarantee that they're ever gonna see their loops. Now what we do and the method that actually works is we get the Instagram handle, we find them on Instagram and we hit them up with a DM. Most people go wrong because they send a DM saying, hey, I like your beats, what's your loop email? We've been there as well, it does not work, you get left on scene. What we found works is building a relationship with that producer before we even talk about sending loops. When you build a good relationship, you build trust with that producer. The method that works for us is once we've found the producer's Instagram, we follow them, we like their latest posts, and leave a comment. Then we'll send them a DM giving them a compliment and then asking a question. Now, when you're giving them a compliment, try and find something unique and personal. So if they've got a photo of themselves and they're in a good fit, hit them up and be like, yo bro, I like your style. If you can't find anything unique or personal, you guys both share the same common interest with music, so give them a compliment about their music. You can say, hey bro, that latest bit you posted on YouTube was fire. When asking them a question, the same rules apply when giving them a compliment. Try and keep the questions personal. For example, if you see a post and they're in Dubai, hit them up and be like, Yo, what are you doing in Dubai? Or what's the lifestyle like over there? Again, if you can't find anything unique or personal, you know you share a common interest with music. So you could ask them, how long have you been producing for? Or how did you come about to get that placement? Another method to find producers to send your loops to is through BeatStars. If you're making drill loops, you can search up drill on BeatStars and it comes up with a whole list of producers who make drill. The producers who are getting the most plays and probably the most sales are always gonna be at the top. So make sure you're going through the people at the top, seeing if they fit with your loops and hitting them up. On BeatStars, you can click on their profile and they've got their Instagram, YouTube, and all their socials linked up. Once you've got the Instagram, you can use the same technique from method one, about finding them on Instagram, giving them a compliment, and asking them a question. It's important to build a relationship before you send loops. Try your best to put yourself in the other producer's shoes. If you're a good producer making sales and some random person hits you up for your loop email, you're probably not gonna do anything. However, if that producer builds a relationship with you, you can be more open to working with them. So, to wrap up, the methods you need to use are going on YouTube and BeatStars to find the producers. Remember, build a relationship before sending loops, otherwise you're gonna get left in the spam or blocked. When we first started, we were always just sending emails without building any relationships, and I'm sure we've still been blocked by lots of producers. Don't neglect the step, come back to this video when you need. Final point, and this one's important. You must know your place in the industry ladder. This is something that people struggle to understand because it hurts their ego. A lot of producers don't understand that they start at the bottom and they need to work their way up. The way you work your way up the ladder is by making connections and honing in on your skills. So the key is to work with people at your level and just above. Over time, you can work your way up and start working with bigger producers. There's no tricks or hacks to cheat your way up the ladder, but you will move faster than everybody else if you implement the techniques in this video and work smarter and harder. All right guys, if you made it this far in the video, you've got all the knowledge you need to make your first collab sale. We wish you luck with your journey and you can reach out to us with any questions. All our socials will be linked below. We're excited to see what you can do and how much you grow. Remember, join the free Discord link below. It's got tons of value and you're gonna find heaps of producers who are hustling, trying to make money and are willing to collab. Subscribe to follow along with our journey. Let's hit a thousand subs before the end of May. See you in the next video.